Hello and welcome to our introduction to our BA Finance and Investment Degree Programme. I'm Adam Charlton. I am Dr. Savina Spangenberg. I'm a Professor of Economics and Head of Richmond Business School. We've created this short video to give you some real insights into the degree programme. We will include some contact information at the end so you can get in touch with any questions you have. So Sabine, what's this degree really about? Okay, um, Adam, I'm really delighted to talk about the uh, BA Finance and Investment with Combined Studies. So it is a liberal arts degree running over four years here at Richmond uh, American University in London. And this degree is designed to provide you with uh, the skills and knowledge to enter a range of industries uh, within the finance sector. And that would include working in banking, in corporate finance, fund management, wealth management, international finance, and a lot more. A great thing about this program is that uh, upon completion of the program, uh, you can apply for exemptions from the Chartered Institute for Management okay. Accountants, short SEMA, which is the world's leading um, professional body of management accountants. Okay. Um, and you would enter directly into the operational level. So it makes uh, this uh, certification much easier for you. Mm -hmm. So that's an added benefit of, uh, of this degree. Our academics are experts in the world of finance. They have a lot of experience having worked there. They're academics, they're researching the area and their work is enhanced with regular guest speakers on our program. So we get a lot of people into um, our classrooms to talk about their own experience um, that they've had in wealth management, for example, or corporate finance. Uh, we have a number of uh, exciting new courses on the program, um, which uh, have been pioneered by the university for our undergraduate students. Okay. Um, oh, that sounds really fascinating. Um, so what are some of the sort of modules, classes that, that, you, that you'll be studying? Yeah, um, let, let's have a little detailed look at the courses on, on this programme. So as I said, this is a, a, a liberal arts programme and in, in UK speak, this is a programme with combined studies. Okay. So the liberal arts element runs all the way through the programme, so through the four years which allows students to complete a minor as well. So I'll talk a little bit about the finance yeah. courses in a minute, but I'd like to accentuate that students can choose a minor, which means taking courses in a area that might be directly related to finance, like mathematics or perhaps yeah. uh, business management or law or sustainability. Uh, but it could be something um, that is a little bit further removed from finance. So okay. perhaps it could be a history or it could be um, yeah. something in the creative uh, arts uh, subject. So, so uh, students have uh, a lot of choice here to complete a minor as part of their whole degree. Uh, so so it's, uh, it's very unique to, uh, to yeah. us here at Richmond to have this element. But in terms of the major, so um, the major runs over the four years. So in the first year, students would uh, be taking a course in, in economics to just get an, mm. get an idea of uh, the history of thought there and how yeah. finance plays into this. Um, some foundation in business as well, because of course finance is a business element. And then there are, of course, some introductory mathematics courses, uh, so pre-calculus, we call it functions with applications, um, and then later on calculus in the second year, as well as computer applications. And then, of course, accounting, because we need to have a good understanding of yeah. how we create balance sheets, but also how we read them and interpret them later mm -hmm. on. Statistics, we need to be able to, um, to work with numbers and uh, interpret them. But uh, another key feature in, in the first and second year is uh, that students take modules in research and writing. So uh, yeah. a big focus on being able to communicate in the written form, um, being able to identify usable sources um, yeah. and uh, really work on, on those, those communication skills, uh, which, which will then help you to uh, complete your assessments. We'll 
talk yeah. a little bit about assessments okay. later on. Yeah. Uh, but of course, a lot of the uh, that is done in written form, so so that's uh, that's really useful. And students mm. also learn to communicate to non-specialists, which which is quite nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's always easy to have a chat with specialists about. Uh, using the jargon, but also be able to, uh, you know, communicate with the uh, with with the rest of the world yeah. is 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 quite uh, quite a benefit. As we have kind of laid the foundation for your studies, you will then take more specific courses in finance, mm-hmm. courses in uh, corporate finance, in I call it financial statement analysis. We call it fundamental analysis, but it's basically the reading and the interpretation of financial statements, investment theory. How do we create? How do we create a portfolio? What theories go into that? Uh, there's a little bit of pharma and French going on there. Okay. So quite exciting stuff, especially yeah. for those who want to go into investment banking. And then again in the third year, there's combined element. Uh, combined studies element comes through through taking courses in service learning so that's a course where there is um, a uh, a practical part to the course um, and and the course can be direct directed towards leadership in a changing world Mm -hmm. digital collaboration so students have a choice to choose among a range of courses there uh, so again, it's really nice to have that choice. So even yeah. you know, if you're interested in uh, the environment, if you're concerned about sustainability, again, we offer something for you. Yeah. And then in your final year, um, of course, we're preparing you for your senior project, which uh-huh. is uh, a core element of, of this degree. You'll be um, studying a econometrics so that you can interpret data, manipulate data, okay. look at... Yeah. Uh, correlations and and so forth and apply this to investors on the global scale. So we have a number of different uh, courses there which help students understand and and, um, well work within the international financial system and uh, help students to get engaged in valuations and cash Mm. flow modeling um, and, and so forth. I really like the idea that you can study things outside of the the major, Mm. the finance investment. So I think that's going to help to keep you more interested and more motivated during during the degree. And it's perhaps nice to have a little bit of break from some of the numbers numbers side of things at times. I've also seen that there's some electives for the the programme. So in the sort of third and fourth year, can I choose if I really wanted to go into finance or investment banking? Are there certain courses I would choose yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we we offer courses such as derivatives, um, entrepreneurship, valuation. So if you want to set up a new company or if you, you know, a startup, yeah. how do you actually engage with that in terms of okay. funding, for example? How do you make sure that your business can grow? Yeah. What should you uh, keep in mind? You can also, if you want to go into perhaps more the analysis part of finance, maybe you want to take another course in econometrics, so more advanced econometrics, or indeed financial mathematics. We do have a mathematics minor, which is very popular with our finance students. Um, And and it really works towards that sort of data analysis part of of finance. So there there are a range of electives uh, which you can choose from. But as I said previously, you can also just stick with the core courses that we have and then choose a different elective, which then works towards your your minor, which could again be in international history if you like. So so it's nice for students to have that variety. On their degree and also meet students from other departments from yeah, other programs yeah. um, we have yeah. a very uh, active finance society the okay. students um, organize events with the help of uh, faculty faculty yeah. advisors and uh, again we get alumni in to talk about their experience how you know what they've learned at Richmond yeah. and how they could translate this into their professional world so, uh, so there's quite a lot going on. Yeah, I really like the idea of being able to. So obviously, I don't know exactly now what I want to, what which elective I want to do. So it's yeah. nice that you can explore different areas and then you know study them even further mm-hmm. if they if they interest you. What about assessments? Um, so I'm thinking there might be quite a lot of exams 
for, for financing investment? Uh, there are some exams. Okay. So uh, not every course will have an exam. Mm -hmm. um, certain courses do, depending on the um, accreditation exemption. So okay. we do have some courses which have to be examined through a final closed book exam. Mm. But I would say generally there is a variety of, uh, of assessments. Mm. So we've constructed an assessment plan to ensure that students get get different types of assessments on on their programs so on their on their programs so within the courses so when I say course I mean a module so yeah. there's a little bit of uh, US versus UK speak here okay. at Richmond yeah so um, typically at the I would say at the uh, level what we call it five and six so in your your third or fourth year you would have two to three assessments on a course there's often a midterm assessment so that you find out how you're actually doing on yeah. the course you know whether you need to up your game a little bit or whether <laughs> you know you're racing ahead which of course is always great to see um, but there's report writing there's um, critical um, literature review integration into assignments there are presentations Okay. So it's it's a variety of, of assessments. So it's not all final exam, okay. which I think uh, eases yeah, a little good. bit that's of the good. pressure <laughs> on the students. Oh, excellent. And um, what about um, internships? I know Richmond has a really good internship program. How, how exactly does that work? Yeah, I think the unique thing uh, at, at Richmond is that we have an internship office that uh, provides you with internship opportunities. So if you're a finance student and you want to um, complete an internship, you don't need to necessarily just go out on your own. Yeah. Competition is very fierce out mm -hmm. there. Um, so our internship coordinator will speak to you and um, make sure that you find, uh, well, they will offer you uh, one of our partners uh, as an internship option. Now, of course, you can choose which, which yeah. company you work with. You can also... Um, you know, if you say you want to work with a particular company, then we can we can make sure that that that, uh, that happens. Oh, that's really good. The, the great thing about the internship is that it's credit bearing, so it counts yeah. towards your degree, um, which which is a great thing. And um, again, on on the inter internship, you are accompanied by a faculty advisor, uh, so okay. you have regular meetings with faculty. Mm. Uh, you have to write a, a journal about your experience okay. sort of every yeah. day you need to make <laughs> some entries and uh, the, uh, the the faculty advisor then uh, talks to you about these entries and yeah. perhaps you have to do something on top of what you've done so far okay. perhaps you're you know yeah. you identify that uh, maybe you're not networking with the people you're working with okay. so your your faculty advisor will then you know, point out that mm -hmm. you should uh, you, you should try try and do that, uh, yeah. for example. But yeah, it's uh, it's credit bearing, which is yeah. a really really good thing. Does that mean if I don't do an internship, I have to make up the credits through another class? That's correct. Yes. So yeah. so it's up to you. So you don't need to do an internship. You can instead just take a, a regular taught course at Richmond. Yeah. So you yeah. could choose one of the, the electives like financial mathematics or a free elective. Mm -hmm. um, so that's absolutely fine. And you can yeah. also complete a world internship. So it doesn't need to be in London. Uh, it okay. can be elsewhere, yeah. uh, which, which is of yeah, particular cool. interest, I'd say, to our international students who, yeah. who would like to you know explore the world yeah. even more than uh, just coming to London which is of yeah. course a, a yeah. great a great place to study finance because it's it's a dominant yeah center for finance yeah, yeah. no I imagine there's lots of yeah good good uh, work opportunities as well so then when students that graduate from this degree have they um, what have they where have they gone on to work or what sort of jobs have they gone on to do yeah, uh, so so obviously there's the banking sector. So yeah. our students um, go go to banks. They've gone to let's say HSBC or uh, PNB Paribas, hmm. uh, UBS. So so we have of course the uh, it could be retail banking or it could be investment banking. But yeah. we also have students who go into uh, into accountancy. They yeah. go into audit. We have students who go into consultancy. 
Mm. Uh, they they might go to to EY, KPMG. So yeah. um, so it's really a broad broad field that you can go into because I think that employers see a finance degree as one that it equip, equips you with with many many mm. skills. So you have the analytical skill, you have number understanding. Yeah. You know, so so you you can. You have quantitative skills. You also have communication skills, especially here coming from, uh, you know, having studied at Richmond. Communication skills are, are core. So uh, it's, yeah, so so it's really a wide, wide range of companies that our our students have gone to. And we, we have, um, just, just to add on yeah. to this, we, we have within the business school, we have an advisory board. So we have okay. meetings with people from the sector, so from the finance sector, who tell us, you know, what should we actually try okay. to get uh, our students yeah. to learn. And there's a lot of focus on um, agility and mindset. So when we talk about all these hard skills in terms of quantitative understanding mm. and so on and so forth, uh, we also want to create graduates that are you know, agile in their thinking that can adjust yeah. very quickly to, to new new situations, which is something that uh, employers are are looking for yeah. at the moment. So so it's not not just that yeah. skills so that's yeah, going to get the, the skills academic element. skills Absolutely. and some, yeah employability and soft yeah. skills yeah. Yeah, through, the, through the program itself. Oh, so yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, and then how, how, how big are the class sizes? What would, if we study mm. this program, how many other students would yeah. be studying with? Yeah. So, so it depends a little bit at what level you study. So at the, I'd say in the first and second year, you probably have typical class sizes of 16 to 20 students. Uh -huh. So uh, the instructors, I would say throughout your program, uh, you will be known by your instructor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, know your name. Yeah. They know when you're not there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we tend to know our students by name. So I typically know my by week four. And yeah, who my students are. Oh, that's really good. Which is, which yeah. is really nice. Um, and uh, we all enjoy teaching these yeah. sort of cl smaller class sizes. Oh, nice. um, it's very different from sitting in a large lecture hall where yeah. you're just one of 150. So, so yeah. small. And then, yeah, at the upper division, the classes get even smaller. Uh, so okay. so you, you work really closely with your faculty, yeah. with your professors, which is yeah. great. And then on this program, you're going to graduate with both a UK degree and a US degree. So if you wanted to go and live and work in the US after graduation, that would really help. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's a big plus uh, that you get here from us, the dual degree. Yeah. Definitely. So it's recognized in the US, it's recognized in the UK. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, okay. it, it'd be a good choice. I'd Excellent. Say. Yeah. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it useful. If you'd like more information, please get in touch with us and through the, through the contact details.